Hello, dear chess friends. I'm international master Ratkovic Milovan. In this 10 hour course, I will explain you how to play Trompovsky attack. Do you want to play something interesting, something sharp, uh, extravagant, uh, unusual? This is the right place for you. Uh, Trompovsky attack is something you definitely need. With this opening, you can express your talent and your creativity. Why to play something that you don't like? Uh, if you play main variations like uh, Queen's Gambit, so d4 and c4, your opponent has many options. He can play King's Indian defense, he can play um, Nimtsu Indian defense, Grunfeld defense, uh, Queen's Gambit accepted, Queen's Gambit declined, uh, Volga Gambit, and so many, so and many other variations. Um, so, and all those variations you should know and you should learn. Uh, so, nowadays people are trying to to find alternative to avoid main systems like Queen's Gambit, so D4 and C4. And nowadays the most popular system is London system. Uh, after D4 and Bishop F4, the problem is that Black has good position and it's very difficult to win the game. If you want to gain advantage in London system, you should be a very strong positional player. In Trompovsky attack, many different things are combined. In some cases, you can win game using tactics and uh, very sharp positions in Raptor variation. Sometimes you can positionally outplay your opponent using strategic tips, for example, in D5 variation. Uh, before we start with Trompovsky attack, we will talk about Levitsky attack. We will work on Levit Levitsky because we want to cover all, all, uh, all openings after d4. So uh, after d4, it's possible for black to play d5 and not knight f6. So in that case, you should know what to play and you want to play system similar to Trompovsky attack. So d4. So in this course, we will talk about and we will work on d4, knight f6, bishop g5. So this is Trompovsky attack. If your opponent doesn't play knight f6, if he play d5, we are going to play system similar to, Trompov to Trompovsky attack. And that system is named Levitsky attack. So at the moment, we don't attack anything. But still, we want to have bishop on g5 because that bishop is doing many things. First of all, this bishop is preventing e6 move. So black has to play e6 move in one moment because he wants to activate this dark color bishop or queen on d8. So that's something that black has to do. Also, black needs to develop his knight. You know, that's again something that he needs to do and uh, if he develops his knight on f6 like this now we are not in Levitsky attack anymore now this is Trompovsky attack so after knight f6 we are going to take that knight on f6 so this is typical uh, move in Trompovsky attack so after knight f6 bishop f6 uh, black has two options to take with e or with g pawn we are going to work on this, so just you need to know that after d4, d5, bishop, we play Levitsky attack, which we start with Levitsky, and now if black play his knight to f6, this is actually Trompovsky attack, yes. So it's just different move order. So let's, let's take a look. So knight f6, bishop g5, so Trompovsky attack, and now if black play d5, so it's, yes, it's still Trompovsky attack. Okay, so after d4, d5, bishop g5, black has many options. He can play many moves. Let's start with let's start with bishop f5. So he wants to develop his bishop like this. Later he wants to play maybe knight to d7, then knight f6, and uh, like that, yeah, just to develop his pieces. Uh, so that this is actually a good move. So black doesn't react on bishop g5 and he simply develops his pieces. Um, try to remember that this is the only variation in Levitsky or Trompovsky attack where we play c4. The only variation. 
So now we are going to play c4. So why we do this? Because this bishop left c8 square. Uh, this b7 pawn isn't protected anymore. So that's why we play c4 because our plan uh, is to play queen b3 and to create pressure on b7 pawn. After c4, black can play c6. Now we uh, we play knight c3. You see that e6 would be perfect move for black, but black cannot play e6 because there is a pin. Our bishop is on g5. So now black play knight f6. And we play queen b3 so that is our idea and uh, after queen b3 you see that we do several things we play we play this because uh, we attack b7 pawn that's the first threat also we are threatening to take knight on f6 and then to take pawn on d5 so queen b3 is very elastic move yeah very good move so that's that's why we actually we played c4 after queen b3 black can play queen b6 after that we trade queens, a takes, bishop takes f6, e pawn takes f6, much better than g takes f6 in this case. And now we take pawn on d5, so we are the pawn up. Now black can play something like bishop b4, that would be probably best move for black. But now just e3 and uh, look, white is the pawn up. White has an extra pawn, which is enough. So uh, why do we play e3? We can take on c6, as you see, but what's the problem? The problem is that after d takes c6, black can play knight c6, and now he has very good development. Uh, our d4 pawn is hanging. If we play e3 or something, just he has many options. He can play short castle, and then after that, he will bring his rook on c file to create pressure on our c3 knight. So that's why we don't want to take on c6. That's why we play just e3. We sacrifice our d5 pawn at the moment, you see? Of course, that after e3, black can take on d5. And uh, yeah, take a look. Just try to analyze this position. It's this uh, the e equal material on the board, but black has one problem. You see his pawn structure. He has terrible pawn structure. He has double pawns on that file. He has isolated pawn on d5. And also he has double pawns on b file. So although he has a bishop pair, you see that he has bishop pair, he has bad pawn structure. And that's why he has worse position. So after c takes d5, we are going to play knight from g1 to e2. Knight c6, now a3. We want to get rid of that bishop. At the moment, we cannot take the bishop because our rook is hanging on a1, but we can we can uh, create we can threaten to to take there after uh, after one move. So short castle rook c1. Now there is concrete threat. We are threatening to take the bishop. So bishop takes on c3. That's probably best for him. Otherwise, if he moves his bishop back, we can simply take the pawn on d5. So bishop takes c3, knight takes, of course, d5, pawn is hanging again, so rook d8, and now we have one interesting move to play, and that move is f3. So why we do this? Because f2 square would be perfect square for our king. So we want to play our king there. We don't want to play short castle, because after short castle, yes, our king is safe on g1, but on the other hand, our king is far away from the center. It's almost endgame. So in endgame, our king is perfect in the center. So that's why we play f3 and king f2. Now our king is very close to the center. Also, we are trying to push e4 in one moment. So we will see. Yeah, so this f3 move is very good. h5 maybe for black. So yeah, he's trying to do something. You see that he has very bad pawn structure. He cannot create any attack. So he's just trying to, to play normal moves to, de to develop his pieces. After h5, we play king f2, maybe king f8 for black. And now bishop b5 with much better position. And the key difference is that our pawn structure is much better than his. You see that d5 pawn is hanging all the time so it's just a matter of time when we will take that pawn also he has double pawns on b file double pawns on f5 we will play simple quiet normal moves and we will create advantage 
Okay, so bishop f5 is only variation when we play c4. Let's take a look again. So we played Levitsky attack, d4, black played d5, and now we play bishop g5. After that, black played bishop f5. He tried to develop his pieces. Um, yeah, just uh, this looks like a normal move. After bishop f5, we play c4. Black plays c6. Now we develop our knight to c3. Knight goes to f6. We play queen b3, double attack, as I said, b7 pawn is hanging, d5 pawn is hanging, black can play queen b6, but we take there, we take on f6, we take d5 pawn, and now just be careful in this moment. That's the only moment that you should be, um, where you should be careful, just don't take pawn on c6, because after that he's going to develop almost all his pieces, and we don't want that, we just want to play e3. Yeah, we don't care about d5 pawn later, his pawn structure is very bad, and we will use that to, to beat him. Instead of, instead of knight f6, black could also play queen b6. He attacks our b2 pawn, and at the same time he prevents queen b3. So queen b6 is logical move, and at the same time he wants to play e6, to, to, to just to support his d5 central pawn. So queen b6 is actually a good move. After queen b6, we can take d5 pawn. Queen takes b2, which is the only move that he has. And now our bishop goes back to d2. So now in this position, our bishop is perfect on d2. Um, black doesn't have choice. So if black takes on d5, let's Check that variation first. That's very bad because we take with the knight and we have winning position. Now we are threatening to play knight c7. If black play something like knight a6, we can play e4. So bishop is hanging. If bishop takes there, we are going to play queen a4. King d8. Bishop goes to a5. b6. Now bishop goes back to c3. Queen is hanging, queen has to go on c2, that's only square for black queen, and we will simply trade queens, and then we are going to take the piece on a6, so white is the piece up, and that's it, it's winning position for white. So, after queen b6, let's go back, after queen b6, we take on d5, after queen takes b2, we bring our bishop back. So c takes d5, is very bad move, and after knight d5, black is losing. Instead of c takes d5, knight f6 is much better move. So again, he develops his pieces. Again, if we take on c6, which isn't a good idea for us, because again, we bring his knight in the place. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to make make our opponent uh, easier. Yeah, so we don't want to take on c6. So we'll play one developing move, and that move is rook c1. That's definitely the best move that, that we have. After rook c1, black can bring his queen back. Again, if he takes with his c-pawn there, we can play, we can play uh, e4 again. So very sharp variation, again, very complicated, and I think that white has advantage later. So knight takes, maybe. Knight takes. So if bishop takes, we have... We have check on c8, also we have check on a4, so maybe knight d7. We can play f3, bishop goes back, g4, we, we want to get rid of that bishop. And now when bishop goes on g6, we have opportunity to play bishop b5. So after rook d8, you see what happens, just we have checkmate. So very dangerous variation for black. Um, so after... Rook c1, best move for him is just to bring that queen back to b6. Uh, that queen is just almost trapped there, so he needs to bring queen back. After queen b6, now we can take, now it's safe, just a uh, queen, his queen is back, so there are no threat. So knight c6, we can play d5. We want to gain more space in the center, that's it. Knight moves to e5, and now we can play e4. 
so this is very interesting idea so we are using tactics to develop our pieces so if knight takes on e4 knight takes bishop takes and now we have queen a4 and bishop is hanging on e4 after e4 black has to move that bishop back and now we can play even f4 knight goes there queen f3 we want to prevent queen f2 so after queen f3 we have much better position because of huge space advantage much better development and that's it so also his knight on g4 is out of play our next move can be could be h3 and that knight has to go back to h6 with h6 is terrible square for the knight also we have e5 move to play and um, that's it so maybe g6 for black so we can play h3 knight goes back now we can play e5 knight has to go on g8 so you see it's a very bad situation for white we'll, for sorry for black uh, we will continue to develop pieces like this bishop goes to d3 knight goes to e2 then we can play bishop e3 and then short castle after short castle after we play short castle we can start with attack in the center so we can push e6 or something like that so bad has terrible position and uh yeah so white is much better here so i hope that you like this variation uh just after remember that after d4 d5 we play bishop g5 so levitsky attack if our opponent play bishop f5, we can immediately play c4. So this is only variation in Trompovsky attack and Levitsky attack where we play c4. c6 for black, which is the best move for him. Knight c3, and now after knight f6, we play queen b3. After queen b6, we take on d5. And after queen b2, we bring our bishop back to d2. So this is enough to remember later yeah you just you saw that in uh, just in many variations there is a sharp play and just usually a yeah, white has in many many positions like most of positions later white has advantage instead of bishop f5 black could play black could play h6 so he wants to see where are we going to move our bishop if we move our bishop to f4 this is something like London system. So now black doesn't have any problem. So he can play knight f6 later, maybe bishop f5 or even e6. And that's it. So black uh, doesn't have any problem and it, it's good position for him. That's why we are going to bring our bishop back. So h6 variation. So we bring our bishop back to h4, of course. Again, the same thing. Um, so we don't want to give our opponent opportunity to play e6 so we prevent e6 also after knight f6 we want to take there again we want to damage his pawn structure you will see that uh, this is the same position as uh, as in, in uh, trompovsky attack so we i don't want to comment knight f6 because later we will we will work on this so after bishop h4 uh, Knight f6 is uh, main move, and yeah, we just take the knight. So again, if he plays something like bishop f5, we will do the same. So we, we can play c4. So as I said, just in, in, in this case, we play c4. So positions that arise after h6 are almost the same like before. So just just after bishop f5, play c4, and that's it you know what to do later instead of bishop f5 or h6 black can play black can play uh, c6 so why c6 so this is very very popular move this is the most popular move against levitsky attack so why is black doing this uh, first of all black wants to activate his queen on b6 or a5 so that is very logical after that we need to defend our b2 pawn and he will easily play e6 97 knight f6 bishop e7 everything so he wants to move his queen because he wants to play e6 later after c6 we are going to play e3 and now queen b6 queen b6 that's main variation here and very logical move when you when you think about this after queen b6 
Queen c1 is most popular move, probably the only move for white. Queen c1 and b3 are actually two main variations for white, but we don't want to play those moves. Instead, we are going to play bishop d3, so we sacrifice our b2 pawn because we want to gain initiative. Uh, after queen b2, we are going to play knight to d2. So, so far we developed three minor pieces, which is very good. And black developed only his queen. And one more thing. Black needs to, um, to waste, let's say like that, to waste one more tempo to bring that queen back in the play. Because this queen is, uh, isn't safe there. We will have so many threats to trap that queen on b2. So queen has to go back, for example, on a3 or b6 later, and that's one tempo up for us so after 92 black has a few possible moves to play one of them is queen b6 logical move so black wants to bring that queen back immediately after that we just continue playing uh, like this so we want to develop all our pieces and then to start with action e6 short castle maybe knight d7 for black he wants to play knight f6 and you see that he don't want to uh, to give us chance to take that knight on f6. So after knight d7, we start with action. So rook b1, queen has to go on a5. So if queen goes to c7, it's also possible, but uh, in many situations, we will have this bishop f4 move. So queen a5, that's most active square for the queen. And now we play e4. So let's start with pawn breakthrough in the center, e4. Bishop goes to e7, which is the best move for black. He wants to develop his pieces and he wants to simplify position. Black has an extra pawn at the moment, so he wants to trade as many pieces as he can. Bishop e7, we don't react on that move and we play this. Rook e1. Rook is very useful piece on e-file. Black didn't castle and black king is still in the center. So our rook will have good job on e-file. Knight f6 for black. And now we can play e5. So you see, it just it's like um, it's paradox. Uh, so we want to open the position, but now we just play e5. So why did we do that? Uh, first of all, this knight on f6 doesn't have good square to jump on. The only square that that knight has is g8. So when that knight goes back, just it's. It's very difficult uh, position for black and it's very difficult for him to develop his pieces, to develop his pieces from the king's side and to play short castle. Very difficult. After knight g8, we can simply play c4 with much better position. So if he wants to activate this knight, he needs to take our bishop first. But after that, we take with the knight. Now after knight e7, we can play uh, c takes, c takes. And now we can play queen h5. So there are so many threats. First of all, f7 pawn is hanging. So g6 is probably best move for black. And now we want to bring our queen back to f3. Again, we are attacking f7 pawn. If he plays short castle, we are going to play queen h3. h7 pawn is hanging. So the only move for black is h5. But after h5, we have this very interesting sacrifice on g6. f pawn takes. Queen e6 check, uh, just uh, wherever he moves his king, we are going to take this knight. So just it's over. So after king h8, queen e7, unstoppable mate on h7. That's it. Instead of short castle, he could also play maybe knight f5. Now the problem for black is that we are going to take the knight. Uh, after g takes f5, we have this queen h5 move, rook f8, and now we can take the pawn on e6. If he takes with his e pawn, we are going to take knight b3 first because our knight is hanging, so just to, uh, just to prevent queen d2 first. When this queen goes back, and that queen doesn't have so good square because, for example, a6. Because we are going to play a e6 anyway, and after e6, black position is falling apart. So that's why we played e5. We want to 
yeah, we want to bring that knight from f6 back to g8, where, uh, yeah, that knight is very bad on g8, and just it's very difficult for black to, to develop him. So after knight g8, just play c4. Try to develop as many pieces as you can. Try to activate now your queen, and uh, you have very good position. So we, we were analyzing bishop g5 variation. What happens after h6, for example? So we are going to play bishop f4, and again, black doesn't know what to do with the knight, you know, just also, it's not uh, uh, just about not the knight. Also, this bishop on c8 is out of play, it's still on c8. This rook is out of play, this rook on h8 as well, so many pieces are, are undeveloped, uh, passive, also king is still in the center. On the other hand, look, our pieces. We just we didn't develop only our queen, but that's easy, you know, when we were going to develop queen in the next move. All our pieces are very well placed, very active, very good, and uh, we are going to, as I said, attack black, and uh, that's it, black cannot prevent that, and uh, yeah, that's why we have huge advantage, because of position of our pieces, because of much better development, because of huge space advantage. So I hope that you understand this. Uh, so let's let's repeat this again. So this c6 variation, d4, d5, bishop g5, Solovitsky attack, c6, most popular move for black uh, against Levitsky attack. We play just e3, queen b6, b3 and queen c1 are two main moves here, but we don't want to play those moves. Instead, we want to play bishop d3, just develop pieces and that's it. Queen takes b2. Knight goes to d2, and we analyzed queen b6 variation. Instead of queen b6, black can play h6 first. After h6, there is no need to bring our bishop back to h4. We can do that. Again, we have better position, but we can do this as well. Bishop f4. Now our bishop is good on f4. Now position changed, transformed in something that it's good for us. So our bishop is good on this h2, b8 diagonal, so why not to play it back on f4? Knight f6, knight f3, maybe g6 for black. Um, g6 doesn't change the thing. Our plan is the same. So, short castle, bishop g7, again e4. Again, uh, pawn breakthrough in the center. So, short castle, rook b1, queen takes a2, probably e5 again. That knight doesn't have so good squares to jump on. So, for example, Knight h5. Knight h5 is probably the only move. Now bishop e3, and now black has two big problems. His queen is almost trapped on a2, and his knight is almost trapped on h5. So black can try to bring that queen back to escape with his queen, but we are going to play knight h4. We are threatening to take on g6 with the knight uh, to play g4, or simply to push f4, f5. There are three threats here. Uh, black cannot prevent that, of course, so he has lost position. Let's let's check maybe queen c7 variation, so we can take... We can take even with our bishop on g6. Knight takes is also possible, but bishop takes is, I think, better. Pawn takes, knight takes. Again, this knight is hanging. Black cannot save the knight, so maybe rook f5. And now we have one interesting move. We can play g4, of course. There is a fork, but... We can play something like this. So bring more pieces in attack. You just you don't care about um, the piece. So knight f3. Our plan is to play knight h4 to attack the rook. This knight will fall in next two or three moves. So that knight cannot go anywhere, and that knight is trapped there. So this is winning position for white. Um, so this h6 move is also possible for black. I just showed you one possible variation after h6. So bishop f4, knight f6, knight f3, short, just develop pieces, that's it, that's that's the, the main advice here. Bishop g7, again e4, short castle, rook b1 first, queen takes, if I, so we played knight h5, we saw that after knight h5, black always has problems with that knight. Instead of knight h5, black could also play knight e7. Yes, that is possible, but we are going to play uh, queen e2 first. So develop as many pieces as you can. 
After queen e2, queen e2, there is concrete threat. We are threatening to play e6. Such an unpleasant move for, for black. Also, this queen is trapped. Yes. So what can black play? If black try to stop this, if he play e6, we are going to play rook a1, queen b2, knight b3, and you can probably see what is our next move. It's bishop d2. So after queen c3, bishop d2, queen goes back, and now rook from f to b1, queen is trapped, finally. If he bring his queen back like this, queen a5, we are going to play e6. So if black takes, the game is over after queen e6 and queen g6. If black doesn't take, if he play knight to f6, we are going to take on f7. So maybe rook takes. If king takes, we have knight e5 check and we are going to take g6 pawn. So black is falling apart. It's enough, I think. So it's clear to you that it's much better position for white. Mm. So we checked two moves so far. After queen b2, uh, we, check, uh, we checked h6 move and queen b6. Black could also play knight f6 first. Now there is no need for bishop takes f6. We have much better de development, so we will continue to do the same thing as before. So knight f3, h6 maybe. Bishop goes back to f4, maybe knight bd7, short castle, maybe queen c3 for black. He wants to uh, bring that queen back in the play. Rook b1, e6, again e4. e4 is the key move, so we want to attack black king in the center. We want to create threats in the center, that's why we play e4. Bishop e7 for black, and again e5. Why we play e5? Because this knight doesn't have appropriate square to jump on. So we, he can jump on g8, but you see what is that knight doing there? Nothing. So we will continue developing pieces. So knight b3 to put that queen in uh, just in, in net, you know, so we are threatening to play bishop d2. Queen has to go on b4, but again in, on b4 she is in the pin, so we can play knight c5. Queen goes back, and now we can simply take b7 pawn. So we are much better, it's clear to you. So that's why we sacrifice our b2 pawn. We want to uh, to gain initiative. We want to have much better development than our opponent. So that's why we do this. After, let's go from beginning. So d4, d5, bishop g5, Levitsky attack, c6 for black, most popular move against Levitsky. We play e3, queen b6, bishop d3, now queen b2, and we play knight d2. 